This is Daniel on a hot summer day. It's the 23rd of July, 2018. And I'm going to share some short two to five minute um, Bible study lessons. And I'm going to start off with the one I think will have the most impact, the truth about hell. <clears throat> there is a um, judgment coming on the world, <clears throat> but... Many people are driven to atheism because there's incorrect teaching about what the Bible says about hell and the fires of hell. The effects are everlasting, but there's no such thing as fires that burn forever and ever and ever. Let's see what the Bible says. God's love and the fires of hell. And one last statement, and then I'll just read what's here in the book. God loves the sinner, but hates the sin, and the sin will be removed. So, God's love in the fires of hell. In a recent USA nationally televised interview between a committed Christian and an atheist, the atheist raised this provocative question. How can you believe in a God who torments people in hell for millions of years? In 1 Peter 4, 17, the Word of God poses a similar sobering question. What will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Let's get, discover the actual fate of those who reject divine mercy and salvation. Multitudes believe that God torments sinners in an eternally burning hell. They perceive hell, perhaps, as a deep chasm within the earth with millions screaming in torment for deliverance. Such a concept has led many to hate God. But what does the Bible really teach regarding the destruction of the wicked? Where do the fires of hell originate? For our God is a consuming fire, is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them, Revelation 20, verse 9. How completely will the fires of hell destroy the wicked? Will they burn in for millions of years, if not forever? For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly, will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. That will leave them neither root nor branch. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. <clears throat> Malachi 4, verses 1 through 3. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. <clears throat> Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. That's Psalms chapter 17, verse 10. The I'm sorry, Psalm 37, uh, verse 10. The eye that saw him will see him no more. Will hit, nor will his place behold him any more. That's Job chapter 20, verse 9. When the whirlwind passes by, the wicked is no more. Proverbs 10, verse 35. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. It shall not be a coal to be warmed by, nor a fire to sit before. Isaiah 47, verse 14. What does God call the destruction of the wicked? And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. That's Matthew 25, verse 46. The destruction of the wicked is final. They do not remain alive in the fires of hell. God, in one act, destroys them forever. The destruction will never need to be repeated. According to the Bible, how long does an eternal fire burn? What two cities does, does the Bible mention as being destroyed by an eternal fire? So, as Sodom and Gomorrah are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's Jude 7. Sodom and Gomorrah are not burning now. In fact, they were completely destroyed. The eternal fire of the Bible is one that fully consumes and totally eradicates sin, uh, its target. How completely did the eternal fire that came down from heaven destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, 
condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. Second Peter 2, verse 6. As Sodom and Gomorrah became nothing more than ashes and thus vanished forever, the wicked will be fully destroyed, never to live again. Does God desire to destroy wicked men and women? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn and live. Ezekiel 18, verse 32. God longs to save every individual, but he has no choice but eventually to erase those who reject his loving invitation to salvation and persistently spurn his mercy. The cancer of sin must be completely removed from the universe. What is the ultimate fate of our planet? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Second Peter 3, verse 13. Will sin ever rise again? What is the fate of Satan and his followers? And they shall be as though they had never been. Obadiah 16. What do you conspire against the Lord? He will make an utter end of, of it. Affliction will not rise up a second time. That's Nahum chapter 1, verse 9. The choice is yours. Where will you spend eternity? Every man, woman, and child will have to decide. Choose to spend eternity with Jesus, rejoicing in the new earth. My decision. I choose to spend eternity on the new earth with Jesus. And I will have more um, studies shortly. God bless you.